Nice one. That's a PR for sure. That's a couple foot PR. Good work. End of a long weekend. Peyton Williams from St. George, Utah. He came to our preseason camp. Within a few weeks of that, he hit a 170 foot PR. He had he technically opened the season with like uh, about 20 feet. He's primarily a discus thrower. He said he felt very uncomfortable with the spin. And it was a really good examination into the throwing chain reaction system. Show me an easy throw, like a, a wheel. Okay, you've got your chest and we're gonna open the shoulder a little bit. Hips back, so I want this hip on top of the knee. Stretch and hold and you're going to bring the shot into this arm, go. You feel that? Go. Feel a little different? Better different? It look better. Ooh, I like that one. We're gonna open the arm. Notice how your chest isn't moving. So you'll feel your arm kind of going as you step. Wham, then it stretches and holds. And go ahead and go step, stretch. Oh, yeah, so that's the next piece, right? So you gotta open. That was the right idea. Open the arm, not the chest. Go. Yes. Yeah, that was actually a lot better. Boom, boom, boom. Rip it around, rip it around. There. Feel that? Open around. There we go. That was a lot closer. See how you're rotating faster now. Ah, moving a lot better. Not too bad. Ah, boy, that was close. Ooh, that was close. That just came off the hand, huh? Yeah. Good sink and push. So we're basically pre-turning the hips. We're using the left side to wind the shot back to here. There you go. So you're pre-turning the hips. So your hip is already into the throw, so you're gonna bring it back and you're gonna come through. You'll go back behind it, yep. Now push with your hip and go, that was much better. All right, so you'll turn and bring your upper body forward, okay? That was close. A wider base, too narrow. Yep. over that was better stretch and hold a little more sink oh just got the left floating around a little bit so now it's starting to move better okay so pull it behind there we go so see how it's still stopping remember I want the left to come all the way here to seven and the, and the right to keep turning okay go there we go much better that's exactly what we want. Close. Not bad though. Ooh, that was pretty good. Ooh, close, close. That was good. Hey, there we go. One of the things we're gonna talk about again today is one of the simplest things about how to pivot and understanding the concept of pivoting and an axis. If you're a brand new thrower and we're talking about rotational throws, we're gonna have basically two rotational axes. We're gonna have the, ro the axis out of the back of the ring and the axis in the middle of the circle. So what we're gonna do is we break again the throw into the six pillars, right? So we're setting up everything here and we're getting this and now we have axis one. Okay, so that's what we refer to as the entry. That's your pillar two to three. And so learning how to do this 
is actually a lot trickier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about that. So whether it's the shot put or the discus, we want you to understand exactly what goes on with that foot. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make sure that you understand that rule number one is don't do this. We've talked about this in some other videos. That's a big mistake. People try to turn because turning up here is actually easy to rotate on, but you're flexed, your planner flex. So when the calf flexes and pushes, it shortens, the muscle contracts, and now it's like trying to sprint off of high feet. You're not gonna be able to generate much speed. So you wanna be able to understand that we stay with the foot low to the ground and we come around because there's what's called a rotational axis. So this is our third grade science. The earth rotates on an axis, right? The line from the poles and the earth spins around that axis. So that line. So we have a line here as well that's from the line from our hip to our ankle. And so if we are turning with the foot up, we have now tilted the axis and now the axis rotates like this. So if I'm throwing the shot and I pick up my foot Foot and I'm here right now some people say well why not just get over here because the hips are still falling and I'm still gonna fall in this way so it's very important to understand that vertical axis and this is thing so if I'm a beginning thrower what is one of the simple things I can do well we teach 90 degrees okay so we move around in 90 and notice what I'm showing you I'm going to hit hinge it's gonna be we have a drill called a hinge drill and we shift and we're gonna go 90 and you're gonna feel how there's this little motion we always teach this kind of a motion so you feel this roll up and this kind of kicking motion that's our sweep leg kick that's another drill in our system what we're gonna do is we're gonna again make sure this stays low and this is a very simple way. So you can go 90s, you can go 180s, and you can go 360s, okay? So watch, I'll go back to my 360 and I'll be here, okay? Now you're gonna notice my heel will come up a tiny bit. I'm gonna maintain that axis, that's the key. Those are three simple drills. And here's the thing that we always talk about. Throwing's unnatural, this stuff takes time. And if you're not doing these types of drills in the beginning, especially, you're shortchanging your athletes. Now, inside the throwing chain reaction system, we talk about how pillar one influences two, three, four, three, four, five, six, et cetera. So that's the big thing that we wanna be able to help you understand and work through. But the first thing is understand that axis and understand how to rotate around it. And that's gonna be one of the biggest things to teaching the first axis in the throw. And that's gonna help our young throwers learning the rotational shot and the discus to hit big throws faster and throw farther faster.